<laughs> what is going on, everyone? We are back with another review, but this time it's the oh, grand sorry. finale. Right. <sighs> Season be, one. Who will be the final Episode girl? Six. Right. right. Uh, except it wouldn't be a final girl. I guess technically it would be uh, the monster. Who's, who's the monster? Right, but you know what? We'll give them the title. Right. There's, they're surviving the brothers. So therefore. Right. This is like monster training camp. Boot camp. I'm surprised they haven't done that yet. That would be really funny. I'd watch. Like, that should be an elimination. Yeah. Make I'd them, watch. Make them, make them do an actual, like, boot camp marine boot camp. Yeah, but I would want it to be more focused on, like, stuff that they would need to do that's grueling, but oh, part, no. part of Oh, no. Crawl drag. through the mud under ropes with a gun while training. I mean, okay. Okay. Maybe make it their makeup bag or something that they're trying to keep clean. I, I don't even need a, any of that. <laughs> Just torture. Torture! Mm. Um, anyways, so... So this one... I'm, I'm depraved. Oh, Hellcat. Hi. And together we are. Hella depraved. Um, this one's kind of fun, because yeah. this one has the Last Supper plus... This is the, f the only time they combine them, because Correct. the Last Supper became such a an adored thing, I'm guessing. I'm guessing. I don't have the reason. It's, it's a cat fight. Well, I mean, I know that the Boulay brothers later say that they like having the episode, because it allows people to air their grievances or anything prior to leaving so that you know hard feelings and or whatever are left behind you can work stuff out you can um air stuff for your platform whatever you need to do so it, it did become a full and then, episode and then we also get the nine looks correct three from th each three horror three filth three glamour Correct. Which is the tenants of Dragula. Nice little catwalk moment there. Um, and then we get a winner. But I do like the interviews that are held while they're creating their looks. Yeah. Because I feel like we don't get a ton of that in future seasons. At least not ones where you see them at home creating their looks. Right. Yeah. All right. So the episode <laughs> does start off pre-intro uh, music. It's the Boulay Brothers' nightmares. Uh, yeah, they're dreaming about... I wouldn't even say they're nightmares. Oh, they have a nightmare they're, because they're, they're, they're having dreaming, a hard time choosing who... They're dreaming about killing all the remaining contestants. Right. Because they want to kill everybody. Correct. Well, as, as Drax does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then they decide that they're going to bring everyone that's dead back from the dead. To get their opinions on the To get their the opinions on the people that are left. Uh, so they wake up. And then they go down in the basement where all the bodies are being held. Come to find out Loris is actually still alive. So they kill her. And we almost get our first ever in season one letting someone come back. But then... I don't think we almost... I mean, they played it like they were going to, but oh my god. But then Swan was <laughs> like, never mind. Yeah, just... Stabby, stabby. No, no. So they perform their little spell. They bring them back. Well, they set them up at the, the banquet table, which is beautifully constructed to look like the Last Supper. And then um, bring the girls in, the finalists. And oh my god, the brothers look so beautiful. Yes. Like the lady superior of horror. It's great. Um, so this Last Supper is actually done more organized way. Right. Than future all the future ones i i feel like it's because this, they just didn't know how it was gonna this one had a direct point direct whereas questions. moving on it's just they kind of let people talk they kind of ask questions as they go around it yeah. feels more comfortable it's it's down the line it's a they they come back so that they can discuss the season they don't come back to specifically help the boulet brothers pick a winner right um so every person gets to ask one question to one contestant mm -hmm. at which point they then have to say who they think should be asked right one person so that they speak. think should be asked um 
They start with Ursula. Ursula's question is to Vander. And she asks that who should win if it were not going to be her. And right. she chooses Melissa. Right. Because of her ability to perform better than anyone in this competition, really. Let's be real. Right. She's the she, best Well, she has the experience, performer. yeah. She has the experience. Um, and then she turns around and says that... Uh, Ursula turns around and says that Melissa should actually be the one to be chopped. Right. Um, and her reason is she just believes she's the least monstrous out of I, the two. I, honestly, I, that, because this is a repeat answer, pretty much everyone just calls her out for being a glam. That's it. Uh, there's a difference. Ursula actually worded it in a way where she said she didn't feel she was as monstrous as the other two. She was not in the gatekeeping manner that you're alluding to, and we'll right. get there. But a lot of people do get that to that point. Um, I hate the way a lot of them answered... I also hated Melissa's response. Yeah, and that's also, it's fair with um, a, a, a couple of the last girls, their responses aren't, the, are very defensive, the, I should say. The, the only person I will give any flack to on that down the line is Foxy. Only because, while she is the most rude out of all of them, she's on something. Definitely. Alcohol, drugs, something. Oh, There's... yeah. Talking to herself, cackling. Like, it was funny. <laughs> we were so amused. I but... don't think she'd have acted like that without... Uh, some inhibition uh, right. lessener. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Um, Zochi is up second, and Zochi asks Vander, what makes you punk rock enough? And... <laughs> Which is just hilarious considering how Vander shows up to the banquet, which I should point out is my favorite outfit of all the ladies at yeah. the table. She's I didn't the, actually get a picture of them at the table. She's the but... only one that's wearing this beautiful wine-colored burgundy versus, like, your classic crimson red. And she's got, like, the huge upside-down cross hanging from her neck. And she's got one drawn on her. And it's, it's just, like, she's looking at them and they're like, what makes you punk enough? And she's sitting there like... <laughs> yeah, and she's the, she's the most punk looking one at the table. Well, she's the one who's always shown up like with the the huge like almost blasphemous or Wiccan signs or I mean they're not blasphemous to me but well to be people... fair even at the at this table now she's not standing up so you don't see it often. Um, in the same way that she was wearing the giant pentagram. Well, that's what I was saying. The in this giant one, up to, upside down. In this cross, one, she's yeah. got the giant upside down cross. She's got the upside down cross on her forehead. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, that's what I was pointing out. Um, obviously, at the performance in San Francisco, which I don't know if all the girls got to see prior to this, but she is 100% punk there. Right. I mean, if she hadn't had the malfunction with her peacock tail, like, that was 100% punk. So right. it was an interesting way that uh, Zochi worded the question, I think, is what I'm... Um, Vander does go on to say that she was doing this kind of drag before the competition. Um, she's never been on the bottom as far as uh, the competition goes. And she has two contest wins, which those don't really amount to anything this season. It, it, it becomes more of a thing later. Right. right. Um, but she's the first person to ever mention how many wins somebody has. Correct. Because yeah. nobody's actually mentioned it up to this point. It's, there's not like a tally that's... Yeah. Because even at the beginning of the season, they weren't even giving out wins per se. Uh, the first couple episodes, the Boulets were like, you did the you're best. The, you're, you're a favorite tonight, yeah. yeah. And they didn't call it a win or anything. They yeah. just said, you did the best, you're safe. Right. Um, and it became the words, you you know, you know, won the last latter half of the season. And then it becomes more important as the seasons continue. Yeah. Right. Um. She's never been on the bottom, has two contest wins, and then Zochi believes uh, Melissa uh, <coughs> because uh, wants Melissa uh, out because she believes that she wasn't a monster before she got there and she won't continue to be one after. Right. Um, it, it spirals out of control with their reasonings for Melissa as this goes on. Um, meatball, number three, uh, to Frankie asks, how did you change for the better? As the competition went on, I'm paraphrasing, by the way. I, I didn't want to. And write honestly, down her uh, quote. the way that Meatball asked this question, her tone and everything, it sounded like, hey, 
So during this competition, what do you feel your evolution was? It didn't feel rude. It wasn't... Right. Um, but Zochi's... I, or, I mean, the response was just... Especially since Meatball was in the final four. And yeah. the four of them together really got along. Exactly. So Frankie's response honestly kind of irritated me. Frankie came into this almost as I'm in the top three. I'm better than everyone else. Even the people that she had just been hanging with. Right. But she jumped on Meatball immediately. And what bothered me is, A, her response originally was not to the question. No. She She responded something completely... She's like, I've been a monster. I've yeah. been doing this. And Meatball and... was like, no, no. I was like asking how you developed more. How, how did your character develop more? Blah, blah, blah. But Frankie remained extremely defensive. Um, and uh, yeah, it just, it just seemed like maybe she was prepared for attacks and jumped on Meatball thinking it was an attack, but even the way Meatball said it, like the inflection in her voice and everything was very respectful to right. begin with. Um, and then, uh, Frankie did finally respond saying that with every critique, she got better. She, she fixed a lot of what was going on. To be fair, a couple things took her a couple critiques on it. But she, she did. It, but, but she, she did, did fix it. Um, until the end. We'll, we'll get, get there. there. Um, and then Meatball said that Frankie would be the one that she would get rid of because she waited too late to the season to start doing decent work. <laughs> and honestly, ah! here's here's my feeling on it. Meatball ah! probably would have still said that Frankie was her pick to, you know, not continue. But on the other hand, I feel like she, had she, Frankie she not jumped on her, she, was she yeah, she worded it that way because Frankie had just jumped on her for no reason. Otherwise, she probably would have said something like, "You're not as polished," or I, I don't know. You know, it just it just felt like yeah, tit right. for tat. Um, Loris then steps up to the plate, and, and both of us. Not yet, not yet. The, the, initially, Loris was fine. It, it, it gets worse as it goes, though. Uh, Loris asks Vander and wants to hear why Vander thinks she should win over the other two girls. Her reasoning being, Vander's been very humble and she wanted to see a little fight out of Vander. I think Vander's also just been quiet, but yeah. Right. Um, Vander basically reiterates everything that she had said to Zochi um, as far as, you know, not losing at all. Why she deserves it, yeah. Right. Um, Loris then says that she thinks Melissa should go because Melissa just dressed like Zochi's promo look for The Last Supper and is unoriginal, basically. And then this is where Melissa finally loses her shit. And fair, but also I kind of wish it hadn't happened, but yeah, yeah. I, uh, so at this point, I actually kind of got annoyed at everyone for jumping on Melissa that the way they were because it did very, come off very much as I called it gatekeeping as very gatekeeperish and I want you guys to understand something. Um, I have like four entertainment pillars to my personality, right? Uh, and, and those are video games, um, wrestling, horror, and then the music, hip hop, basically. Hip-hop. Well, Music is a I'm whole, more rock, yeah. but mostly hip-hop for, uh, for me. Um, and here's what I want you to understand. Of those four, all of them are going to have their toxic fans. Unfortunately. But the least toxic and most accepting of those four are the horror fans. Right. Because we and, are alienated as the alt group. As, as fans of horror, most of us have either had to... We were considered the weird kids. We are the weirdos, mister. Um, and we grew up not being accepted, for the most part, by most of our peers. Right. Um, because of our love for horror. And... Uh, different, the different to style a much, of dressing. To a yeah. much greater extent, this is not me comparing uh, our... No, tragedies. but I, I think what but you're I feel saying, like the gay all... I feel like the gay community has gone through it, but much worse. Well, what you're saying is all of us that have been in these communities have experienced some type of gatekeeping right. in the past. 
And we know that this group of queens has gone but, through extreme but what gatekeeping I'm, but, and bullying. But, but, but what I'm saying is horror is usually more, you know, it's yeah. more accepted amongst horror fans. You're not going to get that the, as, as much mm-hmm. of a rift. Trust me when I say, it, I'm, I'm, as far as the four things that I'm talking no, about. No, no, I know. I know what you're saying. The fans are Compa- terrible Comparatively, online. yeah. Yeah. Um, it was just, it was sad to see but that it was happening. To watch them try and gatekeep her out because she came over from Glam was, it became extremely frustrating. Yeah. It was, um, especially, especially considering like Meatball was even a part of it. Yeah. And Meatball was there with them in the final four. And Meatball was one of the ones that were like, whoever wins, wins. Deserves it. They deserve yeah. it. Everybody here is doing great. And then she kind of. My my other thing is... I know what even Meatball. Meatball was going off on... Uh, my, well, my other thing is is but, that the Boulay brothers chose Melissa to be part of their competition. Right. And therefore, not only were they gatekeeping and bullying and alienating one of their drag queen group, because she is 100% a drag queen, um, but it was also kind of disrespectful to the Boulay brothers and their choice. And instead of looking and being like, okay, what did they see in her? And then look at how well she's done. And right. she's one of us. And thinking to themselves, okay, part of their problem is, is she already had a platform for her glam looks. And they were like, you already have your fame. Therefore, take it, go back to it. And leave a spot for somebody who doesn't have it already was kind of the gatekeeping feel. Like, you don't belong here, so let somebody who belongs take this spot and you just go back to where you're already right. already famous. But, you know, again, the problem with that is that you're segregating yourself even smaller instead of supporting each other. <clears throat> so you're, you're weakening your, your <laughs> platforms versus strengthening them. And also, Melissa has fans that were watching her that came to Dragula to see Melissa and got to experience everybody else that they probably had never seen before, experienced drag that they had never seen before. So she can benefit the community. And therefore, I think... If anything, she can make it... Like, combine the community, get them into... Right, well, that's what I'm saying. And, And therefore, I think that it was... It was not well thought out on the part of the girls that were gatekeeping in terms of the benefits that Melissa could provide and also the respect level to the Boulay brothers for knowing what they were looking for in their show and what they were bringing to it. Um, And it was just frustrating for us. Again, I hate bullying of any kind. And you also do find out when they're doing the... Unless it's against Loris. Right. Well, but but you also find out during... um, (laughs) The, the interview prior, like, while she's making her stuff for the uh, final show, that Melissa got slammed with basically hate comments after after all of this. So the fact that she made it to the final three, it was not just the girls at the table that were gatekeeping and bullying her. The entire community, to some degree, went after her in terms of leaving leaving comments and that's not okay guys i don't care what community you're from she did nothing wrong had she been completely disrespectful of the community had she been doing stuff that maybe she should be called out for that's one thing still don't send hate mail bullying threats that kind of thing but on the other hand like melissa did nothing wrong at all. In fact, she did everything right. That's why she was in the top three and why she deserved to be there. And instead of supporting her and, you know, cheering her on or disregarding the fact that she was there, like if it hurt you to see her there, then ignore it. Correct. Cheer somebody else on, you know, cast your vote for someone else. But it was just, it was very sad to see. And, and, and we see it again in other seasons. Uh, so... You know, like, like season two hurts my soul. Right. But we see it. And it's, it's, um, it's a sad fact of life that we see this in all the communities now. Right. Um, after everybody gets done asking their questions, uh, they are then all given a chance to say something inspiring to one person. What is your message going forward? Yeah. 
And again, Foxy turned around right after pretty much telling Melissa that... She's not a monster. She's not a monster. She basically tells Melissa the same thing that Melissa told Loris. She's like, get the fuck out. Yeah. But then stay you. She's like, stay you. Don't change. Right, right. But she says it in but such she, a no, way... No, she doesn't say get the fuck out. She said, don't fuck with me, bitch. No, that was that was when you. she uh, was actually call it, saying Melissa was the one she would chop, was when she... Right. But it was just... As a matter of fact, her words when she said... She said... Uh, she has a hold in the drag scene, and that's this ain't was, it. That's what I was saying. That's that's serious gatekeeping, guys. Yeah. Please stop. Um, Do better. And during this whole thing, I, I didn't write down what everyone said to somebody. Yeah, but... But it gets Dolores. And it, it's one of the ones, again, where Dolores we, talks. We could have used the same paper talks, from, from her and episode. Talks. And I swear to God, she does... It, like, even the boulets are, like, staring straight ahead like, I can't believe this. Like, they're just... It is everything and to again, do with Loris. Nothing to like, like the nonsensical shit that comes out of her mouth. If, that's supposed to be, like, helping somebody. If 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 you remember before, I now also again have another sheet. Have of paper. another sheet of paper that says, "Loris, shut the fuck up." Right. Because she again, it's me, 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 me. Pay attention to me. Listen to what I've got to say. I want to be shut the fuck up. But that second com- uh. her comment to help people go forward or whatever. Is just she doesn't string the sentence together. Like she just wants to hear herself talk, so she keeps. Right. Here's a word. Here's another word. Oh, this is the way that I think I'm going. Here's another word, and it's me. Right. It was bad. Um. Also, we didn't mention this before at the last supper. Uh, Pinche doesn't did return. Not, Pinche didn't show up. Uh, I would like if anybody knows the story as to why. Yeah. Aside from obviously she was burned canonically she was burned at the stake and like, yeah. you know, she was ashes, but I feel like there's more to it. Like did Pinche just straight up say, Hey, I'm not gonna be able to make a gathering back together? Did they not have enough places at the table so they already had let her know that she wasn't going Maybe to be making it? Maybe she had back? already had other obligations. Right. I'm just curious sick. if there was more behind it. Right. Uh, why they chose not to resurrect ashes. I mean, right. she was ashes, but they were really pretty glittery ashes. They were. Yeah. Um, all right. So then we do get our interviews with the remaining competitors uh, as they're making their Which things. is so cool because it's while they're at home. So you get to see like, uh, okay. I, like, I, think the I, only other, I think the only other time we got to see this was, um, it was tight, uh, not Titans. No, no. Um, re- re- resurrection. Yeah. I am a crafter. So I have a craft room. It's a disaster right now, but I have a craft room. So I love seeing other girls, well, anybody's craft I was, rooms. I was jealous of Frankie's signed Kane Hodder picture. I saying. was jealous of a lot of the horror memorabilia that both of them, uh, well, all of them kind of had. But Frankie's memorabilia was amazing. But craft rooms... Oh, the storage that Vander had for all of the glitter. I don't keep glitter in the house, by the way, but the storage was amazing for, like, beading and... Yeah. Anyway, that's me fangirl. And everybody was just excited and genuinely happy to be in the final three. And this is the only time during the whole final three scenario that Frankie didn't come off as I'm better conceited. Than in fact, it was a great interview with Frankie. It was back to how Frankie's been in every other episode. Because honestly, I've never gotten that attitude no. from her before. This was just a very... Like, I really feel that they were told last supper, this is kind of what's going to happen. Not a whole lot, but this is kind of... And she just went in defensive. Right. Um, so, you know, and Melissa got defensive because everyone ganged up on her. This is the part where Melissa explains that not only did she feel ganged up on... No, she said, yes, I was. So the interviewer must have said, hey, so what do you feel about this? But on top of it, like, all of the comments that she got, um, right. which is just, just stop. All right, so before we get on to the looks of the people, bam! I'm glad that the boulets actually stepped away from the curtain, because this is where you're going to get my <sighs> first com- big complaint of... Not just the boulets here. It's everybody but it's for the glamour. Everybody glam for glamour. Every single one of you wore glittery black outfits, and when you're standing right beside the stage curtain, it's like a green screen. It's like a green screen. They've got like floating heads and hands, um, which is kind of fun, but also it's very hard to get. It's pictures. hard to tell, and like this is, in my opinion, 
not only is the glamour section, which is the first section that comes up, my least favorite of the three tenants in, in general anyways. Right. Because I prefer filth and horror. But mm-hmm. more specifically for this season, because A, you all honestly looked so similar. So similar with the, the, the it's just a bunch of glittery black fucking. Well, they, they, they went with a uh, a style, but they they also ended up matching the Boulay brothers that night. Yeah. So like it's a style that apparently was just there for this season. Um, but also it, I, I just it's yeah it was off putting because I, of the the curtain matching. I and clashing feel and, like it, it, it like somebody's watching you. Well, I know somebody's watching me. I feel like. In future seasons, uh, glamour takes on a different aspect that I enjoy more, which is, you know, you get your Victoria Blacks in there and stuff like that, and it's not just this 1950s um, housewife look, you know, the glam uh, swing dress type style or anything like that. It's like they start bringing in a little bit more of the horror aspect in terms of it looking Victorian or, you know, so, but yeah, this season was very, um, fifties kind of stylistically, but yeah, yeah. Watching them with that glittery curtain was kind of a problem. Right. No, somebody's purring super I also think that the Boulay brothers saw that and therefore they, they do change to a different set. Yeah. The curtain is gone next season. Thank God. Because, honestly, these girls work their butts off to make those outfits, and so for them to blend but, in... And, and I think that was my other, again, my other disappointment. Their horror looks are all extremely unique. Their filth looks are definitely all extremely unique, and they all do that. But their glam looks. is just so similar. And, it, and to me, I'm just like, I get the idea. It's like, alternative, wear all black. But, like, red would have worked. Well, you know. Purple would have worked. There's other alternative <laughs> colors, I'm just saying. When somebody asks, why do you wear all black? And I respond with, because that's what I have in my closet. Right. You know. I get it, girls. I get it. But it was the curtain's fault. It was not the girl's yeah, fault. It's the I'm going to blame fault. the curtain. They did. I mean, like, stylistically. I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to blame the curtain for everybody blending into the background. But I'm still going to blame the women for all dressing similarly. Right. Right. Okay. So. Anyways. It's, uh, so, Glamour. I honestly, I will say this. I preferred... The mother superior look on the Boulay brothers for this episode. Yes. Just because that headdress and they just, yeah, it was unique. Boom! Melissa, look. Hey, look. It's just Wait, a floating you, hand. It, floating it's hand. like a shoulder and a head. It's great. It's great. Um, that's Melissa's look. Uh, so it's a beautiful 50s swing dress. Uh, it's, it's nice length. It's not your normal knee length dress. This is the evening gown, so it's, it's mid um, sorry guys, my brain just sort of mid calf. It's my, my brain just sort of does it's sideways trips occasionally. It's on a quest so apparently. Fine. Um, but she yeah. had lovely evening gloves with uh, extended claws on it. She hand rhinestoned the entire top. That's one of the things that you see her doing uh, during the interview process. The interesting thing to me is she decided to go with blue toned evening makeup um which stylistically i mean she looks lovely i just wasn't sure i think it was going for like the midnight maybe um under the moonlight look yeah maybe but uh she she looked lovely um and then next up vanda with her glamour look now uh she thankfully does a reveal. Does a reveal that sheds most of the glittery shit. So she also um, comes out with the 50 style elongated swing skirt uh, that is the black sequin. So she blends as well. And then about halfway through, thank goodness, she reveals that she is wearing thigh highs with garter straps. And I mean, she looks lovely. Uh, takes the skirt off and no longer glitters with the backdrop now actually i believe she wasn't sequined hers was like a crocodilian leather but it was black so again she still blended but this one was fun because she had a prop right 
Um, and then the last glamour, Frankie. Who? Hey, look. Who? Who to guess? It's a blonde wig. It's a blonde wig and a face. Um. Now I feel like she's styled after the Boulet brothers. I feel like she's a mixture of like the Boulets and like a uh, evil queen. Yeah, but they came in evil queen crowns for this specific right. part of the episode too. So I feel like this is a very. Um, now she does admit that glamour was not something that she ever did before. So I right. these have been her representatives in terms of oh how can I add glamour to what I already am, and I think she did an astounding job. But again, you can see the blend. Right. Um, now as far as uh, the glamour goes, I'm just going to give you guys. We're not actually ranking them by category. At the end, we're going to give you our rank of just all the looks in general. Um. My number three is Melissa. Um, my number two, it, honestly, it's, a, it's in the order of the way they came out, but backwards. Melissa's my number three, Vin, Vander's my number two, Frankie's my number one. Here's the thing. I'm not a fan of really any of them. I'm just going to be honest with you. Um, I, I think they're, they're, they're pretty basic for glamour looks. They are. And a lot of that is more because of everything we've seen moving forward for glamour. Right. And Which is- Slightly unfair to judge it's, someone. It's unfair for them, but, but it, it also it, it's just yeah. It, it, I've it just seen just where happens. this goes, and this is just not it for me. And honestly, I I feel like part of the downfall, which is nobody's fault in this, is everybody did choose the, basically the same fabric. Yeah. And unfortunately for them, also happened to be the fabric of the curtain. So it all just sort of plays into each other, but, like, the fact that all of them came out in this, and it all all of them stylistically, like, Frankie's got the evening gloves with the claws, she's in the black glitter, you know, it's it's just, like, they all share too many similarities, really. Um, right. So my order is different. Um, my third place was Frankie. My middle was Melissa. And my first place is Vander. And Vander was my first place, A, because of the reveal, because of the chest piece, which made her very punk uh, look. And it also is that gender bending that she likes to do that is just so interesting to me. And um, she had a prop. She had a puppy. Who doesn't like a puppy? Right. I mean, I like the puppy. And the boots. She had fabulous thigh high boots on so yes all right moving on to um filth filth. Uh, frankie's the first one that comes out for filth and she is rocking the pig pig nose with uh, a tro trough 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 it's a trough um which honestly should be pronounced tro but english is fucked up but I'm also pretty sure that that is actually a uh, piss pan. Oops. I don't remember the shape of it because I thought it was a baking pan for like pound cake or something like that. It's a kidney shape. Kidney shape, then it is a, it's a urine collector. That's nice. Right. That's nice. Um, but yeah, so her trough, I don't, I don't necessarily remember what was in it. It was something like it was blood related or something like that. It looked goopy and yeah. black and, yeah. You just know that she is shoving her face in something icky. Right. Uh, next out is Vanda, who is rocking like a, whatever this is. It's like an 80s punk chick that got really wasted and sick. at the punk show. And this is what happened. I and didn't it's... fall in love with this girl at the rock show. I'm just saying. She said what? And I told her, oh, hell no. Um, ah! and I'm, it's a great song. Uh, totally fucked up the words there for you. Yeah. On purpose. Uh, we like to do parodies in this house. You're welcome. Right. Um, but no. Uh, so, yeah. She ends up... V- okay, so there's a prop of shit in the floor that she then vomits onto. It's not real shit, by the way. The vomit is real. Honestly, probably could have been. This this chick is down for anything, and oh my god, does she show it. Um, Somebody she, was like, you're not punk. She's like, watch me, bitch. She vomits on the fake shit, and then eats it. So this is the one that <laughs> I loved watching her walk down the catwalk, because she's got a very uh, 
unstable, I'm wasted kind of walk, but it's just fabulous. Like, I think Vander and Melissa have my favorite catwalks ever. Like, when they came out, the three of them, Frankie, and then for the Last Supper, like, they walk out and present themselves, and their catwalks are immaculate. I wish I could walk like that. So she does this really cool, like, high strutting walk that's just, like, slightly unstable and then proceeds <clears throat> with all of this. And that is when I was like, oh, I can't watch this. Like, I might be sick. I don't do well with people vomiting. And then proceeding to... Eat it. It didn't bother me. <sighs> but... Yeah, I know, but I... Da, 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 da. There's certain um, things... Like, you can't watch finger stuff on horror yeah, movies. No. Like, fingernails getting red. Oh, don't they? Don't, don't, stop. Ugh. No. I just don't like vomit. Um, all right. Going back in. There's a reason <laughs> it comes out. Yes. Uh, the last bit of filth. Is my Melissa. favorite. This is my favorite. This is the Melissa I aspire to be like. <laughs> She's amazing. Uh, I, I had to be extremely careful with this picture um, when trying to get this picture. There were definitely censored. better looks, but I used the one where she had ripped the page out of the Bible and used it to wipe herself. Well, you, you used the one where it's still covering her. Right. Is, is what he's going for, yeah. Um, now, this is one of the best filth looks. Period. Period. Yeah. In the entire it's show. It's blasphemous. It is filthy. It makes you think. It's just like... It's... When Melissa heard filth, this is what she came up with. So then it makes you think about, like, her mind and her experiences and... She's got... The props and... What makes this great is we have even had jokes in the past before watching this about using rosary beads... Sanal beats. Yeah, I mean, like, it's, yeah. And she does it. <laughs> she absolutely does. We never would actually do it. Although, I think she has. A, she did, did she. Did is there. A, I thought there was a sensor on the end of it. I don't think so. I, think, I mean, like, I, is, I does think she it have was one? the cross. That okay. You saw dangling. Okay. Because she does have a sensor at some point as well. But yeah, she's ripping pages out of what you, you can assume is the Bible. Um, I don't know if that's what she was actually using, but like. She's she's bloody and mutilated and and it's just oh, Amazing. epic. And then in her ultimate mic drop fuck you moment, the very end of her performance, she, she pops a squat, out. yanks it out, and does the mic drop like letting it fall to the stage. And you're like, and that that sums it up. That's brava, brava. Um. I am pretty sure you and I have the exact same order for the fill side, so go ahead. Um, so my third was Frankie. Yep. Middle was Vander. Yep. Top is Melissa. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and for all the reasons that I kind of pointed out as we went along, but, like, uh, Vander's was disgustingly shocking, but obviously Melissa's won because it's shocking, it's blasphemous, it's the whole nine yards. Frankie's felt kind of short for me. She's got a pig nose and is eating out of a trough. But honestly, she was in an, uh, like a cocktail, like 80s cocktail dress. And like, it just, it just didn't do it. Yeah. All right. Horror. Um, in the horror category, Vander was the first one out. Rocking the, uh, so we talked about it. And we're not 100% sure what the motivation was behind this look. It's very much... Um, Bloody Mary-ish. Bloody Mary-ish. She's, she's got the mirror that she's looking into as she's going around the stage. Her I feel like this is it's indicating inner deterioration sickness. Because her crown has her crown syringes. Her crown has syringes, which could be... A representation of, I mean, not just, it could be a general health thing. It could be, again, AIDS is rampant in the gay community. Um, it, it could be it, drugs. It could be drugs. It yeah. could be a lot of things. Uh, right. We don't know exactly. Treatment. Right. Yeah. Um, so. But there was a lot of thought put into this. And honestly, I would like, I wish they had had this as part of the interview. Like, what is your. Right. What made you think um, of this? But yeah. 
but it's uh, I loved the uh, which you don't get to see it on this picture here, but she's even got the two white out lenses, mm -hmm. so it's her eyes are completely white, which looks really good with the red that's surrounding them. Yeah, asymmetrical cuts and like it looks like her skin's peeled and... off, and it was it was incredibly well done. Um. Then Frankie came out, and this is where we're gonna be. Assholes. assholes. First and foremost, I want to give Frankie props here for for using a character as from a movie we love. For those of you that do not know, um, we are pretty big fans of Thirteen Ghosts, the the I remake. Love Matthew Lillard. Um, and so, she, she angry princess went here. with the angry princess. Here's my problem. This is definitely... Now, I have the black bar on the screen because... We can't have a nip slip. It's Well, uh, they're printed nips on the yeah, shirt, but, but still, I still gotta slip. be safe here on YouTube with it. With that being said, though... It's all printed. I feel like no effort went into this outfit at all. I feel like this onesie that she's wearing is one of two things, okay? She either ordered it off the internet this way, or... Had it custom printed this way. Had it custom printed onto a onesie this way. There's no way she painted it. No, no. It, when, when she's doing the catwalk and everything, you can clearly see that the blood streaks are printed on. Yeah. And my biggest problem is, sure, girl, go for it. Get yourself the onesie that's already printed, but then you need to apply, like... Some customization to yeah, it. Yeah, like actual, maybe, like the stuff for Halloween, like the, the wounds that you can buy, or at least some of the fake blood, or the jewelry and, and the hair and everything that she's wearing is from her glamour look anyway. She goes with this blue look and the, the heavy rhinestone um, jewelry that she's wearing is the same. Um, you know, and she walks around on stage and her walk's phenomenal, but she's just like mimicking, uh, cutting herself with the knife she's carrying. She didn't have any blood blister packs. She didn't have a knife that retracted. Like there was absolutely nothing beyond this and just like pretending. And I wish, because I know she could have done it. I know she could have. I wish... Right. She had changed out her wig, or at least styled something differently. I wish that she had applied gore somewhere right. that wasn't so obvious printed on, and I wish she had come up with, like, one gag. Just one. Uh, simple. Like, I, I, under, I understand these, these girls are under a lot of pressure, and these three looks are a lot to complete. But, like, you, you can't come out... And not I, do something, you know. I w we'll get there in a minute. Okay. Right. So that's her. That's Frankie. And then lastly, we've got but not least Melissa's horror look, who I also really really like. Yes. Um, she drug out a dead body. Well, it, did, it struck me as like a jilted lover, kind of like I. It seemed like maybe a homicide suicide. Right. Kind of thing going on. Um, but I loved the look because it was an old fashioned sort of like either the ghost like Victorian. Either homicide, suicide, or she was killed and then came back revenge. for revenge. Right. Um, but My favorite type of horror. Loved, loved the little bullet hole that she had the prosthetic for in the forehead. Yeah. And slit throat. Again, was just really well done. Yeah. All around. I also really enjoyed that she actually had a full on choreographed thing going on with her props now because that's the one thing one thing about Vander's outfit or, or thing for horror that I wasn't a huge she just had the mirror granted she played it up it looked fabulous she did a whole bunch of like acting just there but Melissa actually had something that she was doing right you know um all right, so that does it for... Then again, our opinion of those are solely based on what they show us. We said this in all the other episodes. I will say it again. We do suffer from not being able to see each girl's full right. act. Um, as far as the quick horror looks, I have 
Frankie at number three, Melissa at two, and Vander at one. Same. So the only thing her and I actually disagreed on were the glamour. Well, and again, like... As far as the overall, like, the general looks. Yeah, the, the glamour, I feel like... Melissa and Frankie were slightly interchangeable, but I still put Vander as number one. So, yeah. Um, alright. So, uh, moving on with the conversation here. Um, over and above all, I do have Vander as who I thought should win with Melissa being a close second and Frankie being a third. Yeah, I mean, so even if I weren't judging this on my ranking of the three events and then tallying it up, that's exactly... Vander had two wins for me for the first spot, so she absolutely deserved the win in my opinion. And then you also look back on how she has done in this whole competition and honestly, Vander has knocked it out of the park. Like... This season, I believe, was very clear from the beginning to me who was going to win. And it's she's been consistent. She's been on the top, which is kind of funny with her puppy kink. Um, you know, all, all nine years, like, so creative, so wonderfully skilled this right. whole time. So uh, my second is Melissa. Um, even though she took the win for the filth, like I, that is my favorite look of this entire season. Uh, not just of hers either. So, I mean, I, if Vander weren't as special as they were, Melissa would have taken it for me, which is interesting to say, considering everybody's opinions of her up until this point, at least ones that they aired between the last episode and this one. Right. And then Frankie, I, I'm sad because... I'm not, out of these three girls, I, I do think she takes slot three anyway. And I do think that she has evolved since coming into this competition. But I do feel like it's a bit more of a, she's got a bit more polish to work on, I guess. Um, so here's, here's my thought on everything. I agree with everything about Van, Vander and Melissa for sure. Um... I think the only difference was, so I had everybody basically winning a category, but Vander had two number two spots to Melissa's own. I only had it. She gave her one number two spot. Um, uh, every single one for me, Frankie's the third spot. Right. Uh, which Frankie had two number three spots for me, so she still would have been last. Which, again, like I here's, said. Here's, here's my problem overall, though, with Frankie in this. First and foremost, she went into this way over... I'm not going to say confident. This isn't confidence. This is cockiness. She thought she had this one. And you can tell by her attitude in The Last Supper. Which, by the way, was her best look of this episode. I know. By a long shot. It's not even close. She, she put more... It seemed like it was more concerted effort into the look. Right. Um, her last three looks... If I had to guess, she spent so much time on the glamour look in terms of design. We're talking about a two-week period. She spent so much time on that one look that she didn't... It's one of a couple things. Either she spent so much time on that look she didn't have enough time to put together quality looks for the other two. Or she just could not figure out what she wanted to do. And everything that she wanted to do was falling through on her. Because all three of these looks, are in my opinion, basic. are very basic. And some of the laziest looks I feel like she's had for the entire season. Sharing the wig between two acts. I don't know. It was it was really sad, guys. Because, again, here's Frankie who is called out at the Last Supper. And her saying that she's learned all of this from uh, the Boulay brothers. And every time she gets a correction, she... She works on it and blah, right. blah, blah. And I felt like other than putting together a glamour look that is outside of her wheelhouse because glamour is outside of her wheelhouse, I just feel like she forgot every critique and everything they pushed her to achieve. Because up until this point, she has progressively gotten so, so much better in terms right. of the polish and 
um, how much work she puts into all the elements of her dress and her act and this, that, and the other. And then she comes out in a mock turtleneck, like column dress out of one material. There's no additional lace. There's no uh, additional hand sewn crystals. It is just one fabric uh, with a headdress. And again, she looks fabulous, but it is a column dress. Second look, she comes out in a 50s evening dress. Uh, she had three different wigs. One was black, one was oh, blue, so, one was okay. blonde. Um, but then, you know, like, for the filth look, this this kind of basic pig thing, like, she didn't do anything with the outfit unless she was trying to make a statement on then, the culture. I don't know. But, but then this onesie but, for the angry princess, I just, but, I don't know. But then they have the three contestants on stage, and she has the nicest looking wig. For what she thought was going to be her winning achievement. And it's not a wig that she wore for any of right. the acts. It's, and it's, it's like so, green. And well, it's black it's with black like green. Like green it's highlights. so pretty on her. Like so much nicer than the blue girl. It actually for, probably for would have been perfect to wear with her little pig with costume. With her pig costume. Because she's wearing like a, a green leopard print. It would have been fabulous. Now, we say that as somebody who don't have the picture in front of us. It might have been clashing greens. Because not all greens match. So that's, that's also probably true. why she didn't. But... But, um, yeah, you, when they're standing on stage, poor Melissa is freezing because she's so, in her filth look. So, so I don't know. Now, I don't know how they film the... Um, their indecision. Their, in, their, their indecision. Their, 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 no, no, no. I don't know how they film their stage shows for this episode because... So, Melissa, during the end, is wearing her filth outfit. And it's very obvious she just came out off of stage because she's still covered in the blood she used. Vander is still wearing her horror outfit. And is still covered in, yeah. And, actually, I'm pretty, well, I actually think, isn't um, Frankie wearing her glamour? She's wearing the, the dress. the dress from the glamour. Right, but not... With a new wig. Yeah. Yeah. Um... So Melissa looks like she's freezing. She's she's standing there like this the whole time. She's really cold. Because, she's covered in blood, well, wearing the nun her, outfit. She's barely wearing wearing any yeah, clothes. Yeah, her whatsoever. sensor that she was carrying as the nun was full of blood. So like during her show, she was like pouring it on herself and everything. So she was cold, cold. Right. Um, and Vander wins, which. Okay, going into this episode originally, the first time we watched it. Before the episode started, I remember us having a conversation, and I was actually rooting for Frankie. And then was terribly let down. I wanted Vander. Um, I was rooting for Frankie because Frankie, I feel like, out of the three of them, came off to me as the biggest horror fan. And yes, that's what I was judging this based off of. Okay. I, he, yeah, I mean, that's I'm what got him into this show in the first place. <laughs> I was like, horror. Yeah, you know, the guy's Kane Hodder's autograph right. up on the wall, and I was like, yeah, let's go. Right. Frankie, and then Frankie just let me know. Um... However, happens. over and above all, again, that's who I was rooting for. But I did say Vander should win. Yeah, you agreed. Yeah. I agreed Vander should win because Vander... It's the consistency. I don't, I don't give a damn about wins. I don't give a damn about no. not being on the bottom. Consistency, creativity... Consistently was and... among the best and always on point. The only time she ever came close, in my opinion, to not being on point... And it was more so for you than me, was the zombie episode. Oh, I thought her outfit was amazing, but she was skeletal, not a zombie. Right. And again, but if you look back at that, even her flop, her flop for me was so beautifully designed. And that's part of the charm of Vander is she makes the time to put those and details and just make outfits that you're like, oh my God, can I hire her? And for someone who in the very first episode comes out and says... I never performed. I'm new to this and I've never performed before. And you're performing better oh. than almost ever... The only person I feel performed better in this show was Melissa. Melissa. And even then, I'm only counting that towards general performances. Oh yeah, like if you her go stage into the, performance. If her you, stage performance. If you go into, again, the zombie episode... Or even the horror portion of this one. And there was one other. I can't remember right off the top of my head which one it is. 
the one thing Vander does better than anybody else on this and on this season, let alone, and I will say for most seasons, she has the creepy shit down. And the creepy movements, the the being able to contort oh, herself yeah. and move Jerk, into jerky it, jerky movements, and, and, and I'm like, telling you what, no one else I've seen be able to do that. Here's the thing: her. she does it with finesse. Yes, you want to watch her do it because I know somebody somewhere is going to come in and say, "Well, Abora." Well, no, Abora's a klutz. There's a big difference between somebody who can't walk in the shoes that they put on and falls everywhere. Right. And somebody that can walk in the stilettos that they have on and still make it look like they're a marionette or, or some creepy being from the woods. The other thing that I will say is Vander's interpretation of things and creativity that goes along with it is one of the reasons that I loved her so much this entire time. She comes out of like she did like her entire thought process it must be outside of the box because she develops things that you are like well i hadn't thought of that but now i am right um and i will say the same for melissa with the the filth look this time like that's that's what you want to see you want to see someone that you're like oh well i hadn't thought of that melissa came into this and i will say this is where i actually agreed with ursula where I thought Melissa was going to come out of the end of this uh, before they went on stage. So just to say, I'm talking about like, like the first time we watched it, when we're in the middle of doing the Last Supper portion of it, I did agree with Ursula at the time where I thought Melissa was going to be the one to ultimately lose because I didn't feel like sh- her monster looks at this point had compared. compared. I don't think she's not, I don't think by any means that she wasn't a monster. Oh, I yeah, agree with she, how she Ursula said here, it. She here, but you didn't think she I didn't had think a fighting chance to win. I didn't think she was as monstrous as yeah. the other two. And then she fucking flipped, her, flipped it. Yeah. And came with one of the best Honestly, looks of the her, entire Honestly, her show. filth and her horror were Solid. amazing, which is really funny. So her glamour look was on point. Don't get us wrong. Um, and like I said, she hand rhinestoned that entire bodice and like, fabulous, fabulous. She blended with the curtain, which was part of the problem. But again, it wasn't that unique in comparison to everybody. Like, none of them had a unique glamour look, really. So, um, but yeah, she just, she was like, you know what? Fuck you, haters. Find out. So, yeah. I I thought this was amazing. I loved that Vander won, because, again, completely deserved. Uh, I also think, attitude-wise, Vander nailed it the whole time. And I don't know that it's... I mean, I she, Vander, she strikes me as humble, like Loris had Vander, claimed, but like... Vander never got mad. I Vander was never say, went off on very anybody. Very chill, laid back. When asked if she would be willing to just do an elimination sure. challenge, she said yeah without any hesitation. Didn't ask what it was. And then went in and just knocked it out yep. the fucking park. Um, she is... Took not being a winner, like, every single she, time, okay? She is, to me, this season, what Throb becomes to me for... Um, season yeah, five. Yeah, like, like this really nice... Now, Throb would defend herself, too, though. Throb had no I think, problem. I think if somebody had, had gone after Vander, she would have. Right. Uh, but I, I just feel like it's nice to have that chill moment. Uh, Melissa, I will say, I think also had one of the best attitudes in terms of what you see in, in all the seasons for her um, concept of... Uh, competition like when she's doing the interview process and they're talking about all these nasty comments she she says exactly what she said the whole time through relax have fun it's a competition don't do it well it's 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 a competition like we can like each other or hate each other but you need to just chill out have a comp have you know have fun it's it's that's what it's meant to be it's meant to push you to teach you, to test you, and to be fun. And a lot of people who weren't even in the competition sending her nasty grams, that's not fun. That's taking it way too seriously. So uh, the two of them, I think, fantastic attitudes. Yeah. Agreed. All right. So Um, then Vander gets her carry moment. Vander gets a crown, some roses, and a bucket of blood dropped on her head. Now here's the thing. Which is fabulous. We don't know how this is exactly filmed so um, 
I thought I had always remembered it as the people on the stage being surprised it was being dumped, but then like as we're watching it, I realized there's no one behind her anymore. As they're dumping it, there's nobody behind her anymore. So I'm pretty sure she knew it was going to happen and she played into it. Part of me wishes she wouldn't have known it was going to happen and she just learned and adapted and was like and then played into it. Would have been cool. It uh, still could have been. But it's still super dope. I, 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 right. I think it's one of the cool things that they do do on Dragon That's with a, everyone that wins. An ode to horror. It's amazing. The only time that they don't do it is during Resurrection, and I believe everyone got pissed. <laughs> the, the reveal was not as... Well, to be fair, though, Resurrection, everyone was at home. Yeah, it was so. all filmed at home, but it was still like, I guess they just wanted Saint to have her just moment. But, you throw know. it on her. Or have her do, like, the blood bucket challenge. Right. <laughs> I don't know where she's going to get the corn, but you know, you know. Um, so, with that being said, we get to do our favorite part. Bum, bum, bum. We're ranking all nine looks. Okie dokie. And you get to start it off, baby. What's your number nine look, and why is it Frankie's Filth? Because it's Frankie's Filth. I don't have a... I mean, like, everything uh, that... It, it's because... So, I think in later seasons... Uh, I mean, it's not... I, uh, it's by the nothing, way, guys, I said that because... He knew. Uh, mine is also Frankie's right. fault. I just don't know where I put it. He... Uh, a... I, I was going to say, the Boulay brothers in other seasons no, call people out for having pre, pre-made, like, ordered goods as part of their costume or a major part of their costume. And it started, you know, but the problem is, is that this is the final. So they can't really call her out for something that she has no option to change in the future. Um, but they, they make uh, a big... Down, why the fuck down there? They make a big statement about these pre created things that you can order online in seasons to come. Um uh, baby, that's not her horror look. Filth. Oh, sorry. Yeah. The pig. Yeah. Okay. Unless yours was the horror one. Mine was the horror one. Oh, see? Then you, you lied to me. You lied to me. Or you put words in my mouth and I just went along with it because I wasn't sure yeah. what we were talking about. I. Okay, we'll start that over then. Um, I, unfortunately for Frankie, it's still Frankie. But um, yeah. I mean, mine is still the filth, yeah. but. I mean, but it's still Frankie. So you said horror was your. Yeah, I just, I, I can't handle the pre-made, like, and not having any gag to go with it. Just strutting around, pretending like you're cutting yourself, like, do something, you know? Right. All right, uh, so I'm going to go then back to the filth one. Uh, filth is my least favorite. Um, reason being, at least uh, so. Uh, um, I at least like the angry princess idea. I don't. I don't even like this idea. I think the idea here is lazy. Even lazier than the effort put into any other costume. I don't know. I mean, This like, is very much, she's wearing just a, a pig, pig nose. nose and eating out of a trough. Yeah, but There's I nothing feel special like, about the dress that goes along I with it. I feel like she at least had to apply the prosthetic correctly. I don't know. I mean, she still had I to mean, squeeze into a skin-tight fucking... I mean, her filth coverall. look is my number eight. So, I mean, you can put it down there anyway. Like, I'm so sorry, Frankie, but girl, do better. Um, we'll get there. Uh, because we snake it. Oh. Um, my number eight is actually... Uh, Melissa's Glamour. Um... I, I don't have a, a logical excuse to like spit out for you guys. I you just, just don't like I it. just don't like it. I it could be because she spent so much time standing in front of that curtain she gets lost to me or whatever. I, right. I just I'm not a fan. Alright. Well mine is Frankie's horror I mean filth. Because again, 
it's it's it's, it's another lazy look for me and it, the angry princess just made me an angry princess so i think that's why <laughs> All right, what's your number seven? All right, um, number seven. Frankie's Glamour? Yeah. Yeah. That's not what I asked for. That's what I asked for. Um, and I just, I, I, feel, I feel for Frankie, I do. Um, but do better, girl. <laughs> it was just very basic. It's very basic. I, I appreciated it. It's a good look on her. But, like, it's just basic. Agreed. Um, my number seven is Vander's Glamour. I just... I hate all the glamours. I'm just going to be honest. The, this, for this episode, this, yeah. This season, the glamour was just not there for Didn't me. Didn't do it. It was... And again, it is kind of unfair to the group. Oh, well, I we mean... we started so late in the game. It's subjective, guys. So, like, of course we're biased towards things. But, yeah, his... He's a I, horror person. I can't not... But it's not even just the horror It's thing. judging them, comparing them to the everyone, glamour that comes out I feel later. like everyone goes all out on glamour later on i think it's interesting and that this season it's just it feels like everyone was like hey can i take a quarter of the curtain home and do something let's with it? put a prom dress on from the 50s is what it felt like to me instead of like um oh like uh neo who just did like an octopus look for her glamour you know it's just like the creativity level is notched up to a thousand from this point on. I, think, I mean, uh, some of my I, favorite... I, well, I will even give the, the first season people props. They went into this not knowing what to expect That's, at all. I, everyone's, yeah. everyone's got an idea. I just don't care. But Throb... <laughs> like, Throb Zombie? <laughs> the... the oh, I'm such a dick. The uh, glam look that she rocks in season five, like fucking amazing that's the i believe the rose look the the tot just oh my god yeah so okay so what all right my number six is frankie's horror there's frankie's horror oh, I, no no that was I your can't frankie's believe. horror where's the other frankie's horror right below it isn't it yeah <laughs> but um Alright, yeah, so Frankie's horror look, again, is just terrible. It's just trash. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's... girl, it's trash. Like, look, my best friend has the angry princess tattoo I... on her wrist. Like, we love some I... of these movies, and that's not it. I struggle so much with these last four that are on here. I enjoy every other look from this moment on, because even Frank, because Frankie is my number five. We'll get there, though. I still liked her glamour look. Right. I liked every other look that was done. These bottom four... You just hate it. I don't. Right. I, and they could be... I'm going to be honest with you guys. They could be interchangeable. I, I dislike them that much. Every single one of these looks... Just not for me. Yeah. I just... I don't... So, Vander's Filth is my six. Uh, Vander Filth. Oh, and definitely yeah. not saying that, like... She didn't do a good job because she did a damn good job. I just don't like it. Right. So. Which number five? Uh, let's see. What did I just do? Vandersfeld. Um. Melissa's glamour. Yeah. And again, like you said, these top four, I enjoyed right. all the looks. Yeah. So from this, like, Melissa's Glamour on, I enjoyed the looks. I won't say my bottom four are interchangeable, though. I'm pretty firm. Right, right. <laughs> um, uh, where is the, uh, the Frankie Doom Glamour? There it is. All right, so that was my number five. And again, um, I, she had my favorite glamour look. And the only reason 
I, I have her up this. I, I don't know. It was her best well put together look of the three. It it didn't absolutely suck. Right. Looked better. And with I actually kind of I, I liked the glittery crown that went with it. I, at least she did that. I, right. I don't know. Maybe maybe she's up there because I I have a thing for blondes. I don't know. I just know it's. He definitely has a thing for blondes. I used to. <laughs> uh, fun story. Uh, growing up, I did have a thing for blondes. Don't think I ever really dated one. Right. That's probably why you had a thing for them. Might be. Uh, I, there was a dumb blonde joke that I was about to throw in there. I'll leave that out. Okay. Um. Number four. Oh, my number four. That's right. Uh, Vander's filth. <laughs> uh, where are you, Vander's filth? There you are. I, like, started off doing really well keeping these all organized, and then at some point, shit hit the fan. Yeah, that's ADD for you guys. You're welcome. Um, of the remaining four, the vomit was a bit much. I will admit that. Now, I don't get grossed out by it, but I'm just like, it might not have been necessary. I, I mean, it was necessary to the Boulet brothers for, like, the punk filth. Well, Swan even, why? or, or Drac had even mentioned Swan gagging. Gagging, yes. Or maybe it was Swan mentioning Drac gagged. I don't remember which Swan one mentioned. Swan mentioned that Drac gagged. And, again, like, but they say it in a proud of That's Vander true. for making that happen kind of way. The one thing Vander got hit with the most is they never thought she was filthy enough. Like, they always wanted her to step her filth up. And they then are, she Lord, went overboard. She. Well, she didn't, though. Is, like, they thought it was fat. Oh, okay, anyway, so... No, this is, in my opinion, the filthiest actual look. Hell yeah. In terms of the vomit and everything that goes along with it. Now, don't get me wrong, both of us will have Melissa's higher, but it isn't necessarily because of how filthy it is. There's a message that goes along with it that just ties all of it together into a perfect fucking being. I, I, I think they're pretty equally filthy, though. Right. Because, you know, you've got the gore, you've got... I guess I guess the difference is I have laughed and made jokes about anal rosary beads. Melissa just fulfilled I, our... I have never cracked horrible... a joke about somebody eating their own vomit. That's Off of their own shit. Off of their own no, shit. No, no. I don't... <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. So, number four was... Where, where was I? Um, I think it is Vander's Glamour. That's right. Oh, you actually gave Melissa the top two. I mean, so again, this is just... No, look, uh, I accidentally locked it in. The Glamour looks were just not... Oh, no, that was the, okay, I already did the Glamour one. Yeah, it just not like anything special but i felt like vander's was the most unique and i actually really enjoyed her look i just didn't feel like again comparable to for their seasons it's still pretty basic but i loved that she chose to make a kink glamorous like i think the gender bending that she does with the chest piece and the kink like i love this dom look i love it so um, my number three, number three. was um, Melissa's Horror. Da -da 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 -da. Where are you, Melissa's Horror? There you are. Uh, again, I thought this was really well done. I like that she told a story, too, because I think part of the thing that needs to be remembered is they're putting on a show, so it's not just a catwalk of a look. And I think that when they have these gags or they have a story or something they're making their whole show that much more for the audience and i really think that melissa did a damn good job this time through like like most of the times but like in this particular episode really telling stories with every look other than the glamour maybe right uh my number three is also melissa's horror look yeah um and again, she she did a great job with the overall horror look. I, I've got zero complaints. And these top three looks, okay, three and two are about neck and neck for me. One is Ew, just one. Blown out of the park, yeah. Right. Um, my number two is, uh, yeah, Vander's um, 
horror look. Same. So you can put it up there twice. Um, and again, hers, it was just everything. It was the movement, the, the, how everything was tied together. The concept. Like, I, I, I would love to know the backstory on this. Because I it's obvious too. that she has a message that she is, like, she's doing something for her platform. She's got a message. I just wish I knew what it was, um, because that wasn't part of the interview process. But she looked fabulous. It was well put together. Again, movement wise she is so interesting to watch um and still makes it look so glamorous like i don't know how she does all these jerky movements in these stilettos and still makes it look like she's on a catwalk you know right and then melissa stole the show with her filth look 100 percent um i think part of it Aside from her having not, like, been viewed as the monstrous type prior, is uh, that she she just comes out of the gate swinging. It's not just filth. I, I this specifically, this, this look, is the one that surprised me. Because I didn't think, I like... I was not as naive as everyone else in thinking that she couldn't be a monster. Mm-mm. But I didn't think she had this in her. Well, I yeah, expected, this is... Uh, I, I, I kind of expected something along the lines of what her horror look was. I was oh, like, yeah, this is 100% blasphemous, and I is, love it. This, and actually, if you want me to be even more honest, I'm more surprised... That Vander didn't go down a route like this. Because of the upside because down cross. Because she spent a lot of time... Wiccan symbols. With Wiccan symbols, upside down crosses, being blasphemous on a regular basis. Which we enjoy, guys. Like, that's not... Yeah, I mean, it's not a negative thing. No, no. But for Melissa to just, but like, pop Melissa out for just the last came episode... Out and, and she hit a home run with... I want to know. I want to know what her thinking was to put this as her filth look versus her horror look. Because honestly, this could have been a horror look too. So like, what made you think of it? Like, I think probably Catholicism was in her background because of where she lives and so on and so forth. And obviously we know that the um, papacy has had some problems in the past. But this was very like American horror story type, you know, like asylum is where... um, she's the nun that runs the asylum and is wearing racy red lingerie underneath and um the nun under her gets possessed and starts becoming you know very sexual very uh blasphemous to everybody and i i kind of feel like it's that vibe but to me that's horror so i love that she chose to make this filth because it's it knocks your expectations aside and is just like i'm here you know, and the way that this was done, like the self-flagellation, the obvious mutilation that had taken place. And I, I don't know if she was trying to express something about how the church views women as unclean because it could have been mutilation. It could have been a moon cycle that was being shown there. But obviously both are highly frowned upon uh, women in general it's a patriarchal type thing are seen as sinners the original sinners and so I, I just the message and everything was amazing um, no matter how you interpret it because she could have had a completely different message in mind but I love that it's open to that kind of interpretation of why this is filthy um, plus she looked amazing and again I, I mean there are other Prime example. When I when I rank this among the best of every filth look in the series, there are only a couple other filth looks that come to mind for the last contest. One specifically, if you think about um, who's the guy that we like that I cannot think of his name right now. A dolly. Dolly. 
If you remember Dali's filth look, he did the very almost hobo esque look oh, where he goes God, behind yes, the blank, where he know, goes behind where the he screen, where he makes the audience feel and filthy. He's, yes, because you're voyeuristically he, watching him right. do it, and and then he's also uh, auto erotic asphyxiation, yeah. so he ends up dying at the end. You're like, oh, I feel so scummy, and that was amazing. Yeah, so. Or, it, or Bitch Puddin' in the next one where she comes out as the janitor and you're like, oh, Lord, gal, what you doing? No. Right. So, I mean, filth is always one of the more memorable. Right, because it's interpreted in so many different ways. I, it was, it's, and again, yes, it, Melissa is, is, is just so good. This is, this again, those are the three filth looks that come to mind for me. And um, Victoria Black on the... Uh, corpse is is her and and those are the ones that like i can think of off the top of my head that just made such an impression but melissa's was the first well technically dolly's was the first though. that we saw but that i'm talking saw. about in terms of seasons <laughs> and so this came to her mind 100 percent organic like nobody has done this and you know finale. she's smiling the yeah. whole time. She's nobody, like, oh, they're going to love this. She's going to do gonna... a mic drop and nobody's going to see it coming. And like, but that's the thing. She's walking around with this, this very long rosary, by the way, uh, the whole time. It may as well be a tail. Oh, and she looks amazing doing it. Like, no problem, Bob. Just strutting around, doing her thing. And then at the very end, just. And then does literally like the drop and and struts off stage it's beautiful it's a beautiful exit um i was so, so proud of her so this is the season finale um however it will be three weeks total on the third week uh is when we will be jumping into season two which we will subtitle bitches business right that is the name of that season no it is it is um, i love bitch Putin. and Next week, we're the doing the The next two blue. weeks, we're doing ranking videos. Right. I, I don't know how I'm going to have them set up yet. i got to put some time and thoughts into it. Um, the first one, we are going to be ranking all of the looks across this first season for all competitors. Kind of like we just did um, here. The difference being, the difference being, these are not ranked based on the competitions themselves. We're ranking them based on... Just what we think Just of the look. look. So, for instance, a look you're going to see higher than what you would have seen it if I was even considering the thing. I will probably have Loris's rabbit hut look a little bit higher. The prosthetics were nice, and the outfit itself looked nice. It was just a dumb thing to have for a zombie thing. Um, where... Don't expect that from me. <laughs> I'm not saying expect high. I'm just saying it will be higher than it would have been. I would have to be higher to rank that higher. Sure. We have very different opinions on this matter. Um, but yeah, it, it's entirely ranked on just what uh, we like. presentation and how they I don't even it. care about presentation. I'm, you said it looked very put together. Like That's what I mean. Oh, I that type of presentation. About, okay. Like, not their actual act or whatever, but like, how polished is it? How well thought out was the outfit in terms of just like suiting them and like the pieces? Because this is the, seri the season where I know I've made this statement several times, but I don't know if the girls thought that they were going to be filmed from waist up, but, like, there are definitely some that are going to be lower because there was nothing done waist down. You know, it's not a, a fully put-together outfit for me. Right. Kind of thing. And then the... And then the week after that, we are going to be ranking all of the Boulay's outfits. Oh, and they're stunning. Um... Mm -hmm. So that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm actually really looking forward to that one specifically. Cause Me too. Because you you don't get to see the boulets getting ranked very often. No, not at all. Not at all. And they always look fabulous. Always. So this is just going to be sort of like a subjective, what is our favorite. Yeah. Um, something we may do in f uh, future seasons, not this season, because this being the first season, there wasn't very many differences. We may have another episode at the end of the season where we rank the judges. 
Oh, because some of them... Because there are some judges that come in looking... So, this season, more There's specifically, more they came... Well, and they also came through looking more just, like, it was, presentable. It was either people came in to look more business-like, or... Yeah, They just weren't They really, looked very dapper. I mean, one of our judges was a skeleton that just... Yeah. ...sat there. But in other seasons, they do come decked out, and that would be fun. Yeah, that's why we got to um, start showing the judges. Although, the, although with the judges, it's either we may rank it differently. We may rank it based on more on how who came in with the coolest look the entire season. Type no, thing. more um, ranking our judges based on just how we liked them in the oh, season. Because okay. uh, some judges are more conversationalist, uh, more into it. Whereas some judges are just kind of quiet and they just sit there. Like, for instance, my favorite judge this season is probably Bible Girl. Because she's just, she's really talking. She's very into it. She's giving insight. She's yeah. talking about it. And she's really into it. Yeah. Whereas somebody a little more like, um, not Darren. Who's the other guy? that? Uh, I forget their names. The skeleton. I'm, I'm terrible just at the skeleton names. out there because he was a, a, a literal judge that didn't do anything. Uh, and he didn't do anything. He'd have been right. lost. He was great for the joke. Like, I love, uh, in further seasons, we'll see, like, the chick from Hereditary. I love, like, her comments and stuff. So, yeah, we'll we'll get into that. Bonnie is amazing. The Nun is... We, we would obviously have... Um, yeah, I love Cassandra, the ladies, Elvira. The, the ladies from season... Uh, well, for this season, we would have had the ladies from... Uh, not this episode, but the last episode. Oh, um... um why did I do he- Hecarina? He- Hecarina. And, uh... And Peaches. Yes. Peaches God, Christ. God, why did... Peaches Christ. Fucking Christ. Why did I forget that? I was having I a hard that? time, too. <laughs> I was having a hard time, too. I was like, mm. the one drag person I knew coming into this. Right. And, and it's... I do, like, in further seasons, obviously past season five, because of the gatekeeping and some of Melissa's struggles with this, I would love to see them bring in some mainstream drag artists who also enjoy horror. Right. And we're just talking judges. Are you talking about for judges? Um, yeah, just just for judges. So they'd just be there for one episode. But like, I, Trixie Mattel. I, you know what I would like to see? Here's what I would like to see. Because I think this would be fun. And this is... So we've been watching a lot of different uh, for over the past year I would say the past within the past 365 days we have watched a lot of different reality contest type shows uh, maybe none of them to the extent that this is because this is definitely more MTV-ish in terms yeah. of once it gets going like we see people doing stuff behind the scenes and talking right. and conversating but we've watched like Halloween oh Baking God. Wars. Um, <laughs> we we watch a lot of Halloween horror centric anything. Like if there's it, a contest, baking. If people are talking, pot, we did pumpkin I love, designing. Oh my God, the one that is uh, pumpkins plus um, sugar work plus uh, then there baking. Was, then there was there's strictly baking. Forged in Fire, which is another contest show that we watch. And fire. Um, this um, that's that's kind of. The, the gamut, really. Uh, we, like, when he says we watch a lot of reality TV, I'm sitting I'm, here like, yeah, no, we don't watch Naked and Afraid. No, we no, don't, no, nothing like, like nothing, that. Nothing, yeah. Um, I would like to see a panel of judges. Ooh, that would be fun. That are consistent. Kind of like the a Forge Fin Fire, like, oh, yeah, yeah, season. yeah. Because consistent. they do that in the, the Halloween baking wars. Right. And what I want is somebody that specializes in a thing as as a judge for. Did they get Don to do? Who? Um, Mancini. Don Mancini. To do a, a whole, or did he just come in? No, for... I think he just. Yeah, no, no, I think you're thinking of. Um, so you're thinking of the one of the Pumpkin Wars ones, and yeah. I think he was one of the guest judges. Because okay. they had the two consistent judges, and then every week there was a rotating They always have a special one. effects judge and, um, what is the other one? A baking judge. They always have those two. So here's what I would love. Just to, I'm not saying these people specifically. This is major example. Just an example. As a matter of fact, I'm going to pick people that would not do this. Right. Specifically. So bring in a RuPaul who would be more geared towards glamour. Well, just strictly drag queen, yeah. Um, no, I'm not even saying it all has to be drag queen. 
people in the drag queen community. You're talking me. I'm just yeah. saying Ouch. RuPaul would be good for glamour. Glamour, right. Then you bring in somebody like a, a, a Rob Zombie for horror. Right. And then you bring in somebody... Uh, who would be a good filth? Uh, bring in a comedian. Bring in Daniel Tosh. Or fucking... Um, Daniel Tosh was wild. I don't think Daniel Tosh would do it. But somebody along the lines of like a Ricky Gervais. Okay. Right. So they could be filth. And then you have the boulets. Right. I think what I would love is... And that is... gives you five people. There's no way something's going to be a tie. Right. I, I would love some other uh, this... LGBTQ plus representation up there. So, yeah, I, I agree with you. I would love to see the Boulay brothers. I, I So, I was thinking more... Now, I wasn't necessarily straying away from LGBTQ plus on purpose. Um, I was just trying to think of famous people that are going to bring eyes to the product. Well, but that's what I'm talking about. So, like, you've got your RuPaul, but yeah, you've got plenty of supporters in other avenues that I think, yeah, you bring them in as a specialist. I, I also think... I think you're getting enough... I think you're getting enough LGBTQ plus representation with the contests and the boulets. The reason I was... And I don't think it was mentally. If you bring in people that aren't gay aren't lesbian aren't bi and they come in it's going to have people that are straight be like oh well these straight people are over here watching, watching this it. maybe it's okay if i'm over here watching it and that's yeah, where my mind I, I want i want people to realize that this is it's fun right and it's actual leave your politics to the yeah. door i don't fucking care leave leave all of your religion and all of that stuff just like either watch it or don't but honestly right. it's it's good fun um, they're class ladies. They are class ladies. And the Boulay brothers, honestly, they 100% deserve the... I may also just want Rob Zombie and more things, I'm just saying. Well, was... sure. Sure, but, like, there's so many characters that but... he that he specifically casts all the time or that uh, Tim Burton casts all the time. All of those people you... would be great. Do you... oh, or if you want to do the guest, the guest stuff, do you know how much fun it is? Say, say this is just a kid. Spitball. Okay. Could you imagine if bring in Chucky and Tiffany, the dolls, as guests, and have Brad Dourif them actually and old girl them. backstage watching but speaking through a microphone while love, they're talking? I love Tilly. Jennifer Tilly? Yeah. I don't know why I couldn't remember her name, but uh, her and Brad but you know have who, them do the voices. It would be amazing. You know who I want for Glamour, like as a guest judge at some point? I want Jennifer Coolidge. Okay. There are enough people in most of the seasons at some point that use her as a point of reference for the glam looks or the um, basic bitch looks or whatever. And Jennifer Coolidge is just such a cool person that I think she would... I mean, I know she would love this kind of stuff. Right. Um, the reason I was saying Trixie is Trixie already does unique makeup for her drag. Like, very unique. And it's not her attempting to look like a regular lady. Like, she has very geometric designs that she does with her eyeshadow and, and stuff like that. Uh, but she is considered mainstream drag. She has done RuPaul's Drag Race. Um, she does a lot of stuff with Mattel, Barbie, uh, unpackaging, like, the Easy Bake Oven, stuff like that but is such a chill person with a good sense of humor. And I honestly think she would get such a kick out of being a guest judge or a repeat judge. And she would give extremely good advice to the girls because she's been through competition with drag right. and would have some background. Of course, she's not a monster. I don't even know if she's into horror, but um, I just think for glam looks or or man she would have the pretty and pink look jennifer coolidge and trixie would have made amazing guest judges for that so i mean i just i i feel like there's others again no disrespect to the boulet brothers because i think they are so good at this whole conceptual planning like they know where they're trying to go 
and how they're trying to do things. And I do know that at this point they are coming up with complications based on the fans, not based on their show, but like somebody sending death threats to Drac over a competition show. Guys, like take Melissa's advice. This is a competition, not a dick. Have fun. Don't take it so hard, guys. Or, I mean, like, if you like it hard, like, do. But, like, not this way. Death threats are not the way to do it. Just ride it, that pony, have fun, follow Genuine. You got it. Um, but I think the Boulay brothers know when they bring judges in who, who they're bringing in this, that, and the other. I would like a panel. I would also like longer episodes and or a Patreon. Because, I, again, I want... I either want a Patreon or I want YouTube... For, backstories like for, extra uh, basically i don't even need extra i don't need backstory i don't need any of that i just i just want the full stage shows to be posted well, but that's what i'm saying so like, that we can see they they always call those extras though and and what i want is i want each gal's full show so that we can actually see their performance and understand what the boulet's cr- critiques are on but i want that full conversation that takes place with them and the judges because I'm pretty sure they have a much more at having listened to Swan say we have a list and we're not just doing this you know arbitrarily like we actually have like this way that we are developing who is going to be the winner like it's it's much more than just oh we pick you um but I think feel like we get just the highlights of the judges conversation with them too so if that were just on patreon as an extra that went along with the girls performances i would 100 percent watch it right i know that they're not calling the judges there to give like two seconds you know they said more while they were there so anyway interactions like the interviews with the girls over um what inspired their look that's a big one for me like, not these competitions, uh, like like the ones all the way up to here, because they were given their inspiration, basically. This one, because it's so broad in terms of you need to bring horror, filth, and glamour, but there is no, it's not a zombie thing. It's not this. It's just what you come up with. This specifically, the finale, is where I want what was your uh, inspiration for this look? What it's message? where we get both you guys in a video now. I know. Hi, Cuddlebug. This is our shy boy. Who is... <laughs> oh, you're going to come sit in my lap, too? They, they don't like sitting on my lap when I'm up here because okay. what I That's tend to wear is more slippery for them. They like your jeans. <laughs> he's like, hi. Hi. Oh. Normally, oh, normally he's a mama's cuddles. girl. Okay. Yeah. He's a mama's girl. Um, But, yeah, so... I would, again, these are just ideas, spitballing, things that we think mm-hmm. would be cool. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, Boulez, do what I you want. I love this. You're doing a fabulous you, job. We love it. You have done... We're hooked. Yeah, I want more. Like, I need you guys to not take <laughs> breaks. I need, like, season after season to just <laughs> that keep That would going. be so wretched for I, all of them. It really would. But on top I of it, like... Jokingly. I don't think, and I mentioned this to, to Deprave last night, I was like, I don't think I have ever had an EDM house song stuck in my head before, because that's just not, like, Please. I listen to rock metal more, and yet we, like, I go through the day and somebody will say something and I'm like, horror. Filth. Filth. <laughs> and I can hear the do 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 <laughs> yeah, It actually, so that part of the of that song actually sounds a lot like the old Goosebumps theme song. Um, no, so at, at the end of the day, though, do what you guys do if you ever watch this. We love it. It's um, fabulous. Whenever, and here's the thing. The only thing I would ever truly ask and mean is to please not take, like, two weeks off in between the, uh, the second to last episode and the finale. Oh, that was for Christmas, though. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> Maybe maybe air the show two weeks sooner. However, it has to work. So basically, y'all are doing a fantastic job. We're hooked as cis white people who, you know, <laughs> he's not into fashion. We're both not into the competition shows, really. No. And then 
here's this and we're hooked. So thank you. Oh, thank that's you. A deep burn. You make it uh lovely, you make it fun, you make yeah. it sassy. I love me a spicy queen. Um, And it's just, uh, watching the creativity is just, to me, so inspiring. Like I said, I'm a crafter. Expand The Last Supper into two episodes, because we know there's more. Oh, man, he loves the catty shit. I'm not there for it. I hate that kind of shit, because to me... The Boulets love it. I know they do. They incite it. Like, specifically, they'll go around going, oh, they're Mm. being too nice to each other, you know? And I'm like... Y'all, wow, because I wouldn't want to deal with it. Right. But apparently they've got more patience and attitude than I do. I honestly, I couldn't. But then again, that's because I'm an introvert and sort of a misanthrope on top of it. So there you have it, people. Right. I'd rather spend time with my cats. (laughs) You're so cute. All right, we love you guys. We will see you next week to rank all the looks of the ladies. Yeah, we'll see you then. Bye-bye.